items we mentioned on uh, page 9, which was the procurement of spare parts for the Airbus fleet. Um, that's how I thought that one related to, because uh, I think when they are buying spare parts for the Airbus fleet, um, there were areas where they had to make sure that they order seats for the aircraft to come with the seats installed uh, and then the paperwork, I think they had not done the paperwork in the original uh, uh, planned activities for procurement for that year, they had missed it out. Uh, again, I would have to defer to the details of the documents, which I don't have, uh, but that's how I read it, because that was also problematic, because you order according to the manufacturing schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and if they tell you that, okay, they, you have not ordered enough seats for this section of the aircraft, then you have no choice but to place an order and do the paperwork later. Because if you wait, then that manufacturing process will, will come and there will be no seats delivered by the independent party who is supposed to take them there. So that's how I read that one. But wouldn't this have to be done again within the rightful procedure? Because when you look at eight, yes. it talks about procurement without contracts committee approval. Uh, now that one, for us, there was a contracts committee. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, when we left, uh, that contract committee was disbanded. Maybe that's why they got into these issues. But otherwise, before that, we, we had a contracts committee and everything was going through that. Yes, Honorable Your Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, the... the uh, I'm not sure what that is. I know the first part is for CAA, so it's not for the airline. Um, but the second part, uh, as far as I know, during that period, we did not target to purchase so many motor vehicles. Uh, so... I'm not sure what that relates to. I would have to have sight of the documents to see what it is. I can only assume maybe it happened uh, after my tenure. Did, did you, as CEO at the time, interest yourself in uh, having one, a staff structure in place and then a salary structure for the airline to be efficacious? Yes, Honorable Chair, because right from the way it go, if you look at the business plan, attached to the business plan itself was a salary structure and, you know, and organograms. So it all started from there. The interim board were working from that same document. It was adopted by the interim board. That's the guidance that we are getting when we are recruiting and when we are putting people in several positions. But so, the Auditor General is saying it's non-existent. Is it that it was not implemented, it remained in a plan somewhere? I'm not sure what, what has happened because all this, we had several board meetings and board minutes to deal with that. Even the time when we transitioned the structure to accommodate the coming of the A330, we had many board meetings on the organogram which brought in, brought in other elements like chief operating officer to manage uh, the structures and also training individuals within flight operations to add to the structure that we already had in the beginning. So all of these were part of the deliberations at the board and they were adopted then through the HR committee and they should be available at the company. You mentioned a little about procurement and there are other issues to do with procurement. When you go to seven, uh, there was implementation of unplanned procurement activities. That's point number seven. Uh, that was to a total of about seven billion dollars. There were different figures. There were euros, 1.1 million euros. There was Kenyan shillings, US dollars and so on. If you do a tabulation, that comes to about 7 billion Uganda shillings. Number 7. No, no, no. Page 15, according to my 
a document, but number seven, point number seven. Says rehabilitation of country aerodromes, 18.6 billion. Then purchase of motor vehicles and other transport equipment at 539 billion. What was that about? Honorable Chair, when I looked at the, the Auditor General's report for this year, the, I was saddened to see that the opinion not qualified. That's the first thing. And it was qualified because people didn't do a stock take at the year end, which is counting what is there and verifying that the value in the accounts is there. So I don't know why that was done. That should have been done, should have been done on the 30th of June, 2021. It's easy to organize. You call the auditors and you count all the spares and you assign values to them. But who was meant to do that? Uh, the management was meant to do that. I was not there at the time mm. because I had left in April. So that is the first thing. So. My comment on that, that this should have been done because it's easy to do. Uh, you go to the stores and you make sure that all your spares are in a darkened row and you show evidence of valuation. And then the long outstanding payables, 47 billion? Uh, long outstanding payables. That's the one before. Uh, yeah, long outstanding payables, I don't know. Because at the time that we left the airline, there was a lot of cash in the bank. And the mm. statement can show that we, mm. if I'm correct, order colleagues, if mm. I'm correct, we had over $30 million in the bank account mm. uh, at the time we were leaving. So it should have been enough to pay. How Maybe did these payables accrue? Yeah, payables is in the course of the business. No, no, no. I mean these particular ones. These particular ones, I don't know because there is no listing and I don't have records as at now. This is one of the issues. I'm looking at it. I have no access to the company. I don't have records. But payables are mainly creditors. So there would be people uh, who, would, who would be supplying you uh, with, with, uh, with either spares, with fuel, with catering, with ground handling services. Those are the normal payables that you would normally have in an airline. So would you say at the time you were in charge, procurement regulations were followed to the letter? At the time we were in charge, I remember the first procurement audit we had. Mm. Uh, the issue that was there was the question of appointing contract managers. Because what we were doing before, from the time we started, was the head of department, was the contract manager. So when that was pointed out, we started appointing contract managers. That was the major issue in procurement. The other issue that was there was the fact that the auditors were reconciling between the procurement, uh, 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 the procurement procedures as per government and our accredited procedures, of which we had a dispensation which we obtained from the beginning. So there are those differences where we are applying accredited procedures and they are auditing us on the basis of the procurement regulations. There's an item, item 10. There was a purchase of a vehicle for South Sudan office through direct procurement. Yes. Uh, why was that? This was a total of 103 million. Yes. You know, and you people decided to do direct procurement as opposed to competitive bidding. Yes, this was an issue which caused the then procurement manager to be transferred. For mm. me, I had wanted him to be removed because it's one of the issues I was not satisfied with. Mm. So I, in the end, with the agreement of the board, we transferred him to a lesser position in the uh, engineering stores. Who was that? Uh, the gentleman was... Uh, Mr. Moses Wangalwa. Moses who? Wangalwa. 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 What position was he holding? He was procurement manager. Procurement manager. So you're saying you wanted him fired because of this, but the board decided let's just demote him. How, how was that? Why, did no, you have a board meeting? Did you write to the board saying, I would like this person to be fired? Then the board says, no, let's just no, uh, we transfer we him or what? Yeah, we discussed the matter uh, and um, we... 
who are trying to find a position. Part of it is training sometimes. So the view was taken that he needed to be trained, uh, given a chance to excel uh, in another position. So it, it was resolved that way. Uh, but it was an anomaly, even though when we compared the prices, the prices were within norm. That was saved. Because the price that was paid was still within the prices that the other vehicles of the similar make uh, and yet uh, were also paid. And that was, uh, that was adequately explained, so that's what saved the situation. There is um, a table, mm -hmm. a summary of key outputs. Honorable Chair. That's number five according to the report. You were CEO. Yes. The Auditor General's queries. So I think that's what they are alluding to. Okay. Maybe, maybe I can look at that and see which one it is that we are addressing. I will address it. Have you looked at a copy of the Auditor General's report? Yes, I have. April 2021. Okay. Uh, but before then, you had been CEO for how long? Yeah, for at least a year and a half. At least a year and a half. Okay, so some of it, you were suspended on 21st May. By the company. It is not that uh, what, what, what you put in expense when you are setting the, the, the company. I, I don't think the explanation is right. That out was really, you know, uh, explained clearly. Is the query is concerning the, the, the interest or the money which was expended, planning that they incurred in setting everything until the is on the money which was collected to find out, according to his explanation, is that the auditor thinks the GDP is getting from the airlines. That's scientific now. Okay. Uh, I see. We should have some money, not losses. Maybe in your graph was good losses, as you're saying, for this. Um, uh, um, something, not losses, for our airlines. After how long had you predict? In your uh, perceptive uh, uh, um, analysis, when you're planning for this, uh, after... Um, now, um, all the members, and most of us are worried about the losses and we've been tossing for and The allegations that has led to his maybe removal from the CEO's uh, office and so forth. The, the airline is very much well known for losses every other financial year. Are those allegations related to the losses in the, in the, in the Honorable has just uh, asked? These allegations, you know, we didn't... Uh, the structure of how the company starts. You employ staff, you buy equipment, you don't have the aircraft. The aircraft are buying, you are coming, you have people, you pay rent, you are not earning income. So those are pre-operational losses. It's like that on any business, even when you are setting up a retail business, you get that loss the first year and all the rest of it. So those are expected. Yeah, so the aircraft come, you have to spend money on pilots, training, bring engineers, buy spares and everything. So you are spending without getting enough money to pay for all your expenses. So what you have to do to reduce the losses is what we are talking about earlier you have to uh, act on your income generating capacity. What is your income generating capacity? It is the opening of routes to those destinations which will bring you payback and money. And that is why I said the company has not opened those routes according to the program that was agreed. When they do, the money will come in and the losses will reduce. Yes, Honorable Hashim. I've fallen short in terms of proof. Uh, the Honorable asked whether Mr. Bagenda is the one at Civil Aviation. No. Uh, Mr. Bagenda, who used to be the C first CEO when we started, is now the Director of Maintenance uh, within Uganda Airlines. That's the position which he holds. And I believe he came to the committee earlier. Um, did I write to the authority regarding uh, the issues that happened to these people? Uh, like I said, we took the matter to the board. Uh, 
the board took the action to uh, remove the individual from the company. In my communications to my principals, I always report on the issues and I included it in my report to the principals as was the procedure at the time. Uh, I think the Honorable asked that people are convinced that there was something wrong in the company. Uh, I think people are not convinced, but they made allegations of which some were put on the documents I shared with the Honorable Chair, which were totally unsubstantiated, and we are just trying to find something. The impression I get is that the people wanted to get there, look at the record, and find something that they could use against us. Now the difficulty is they went there, and then they didn't find anything. So now it became a matter of let's look for something uh, to to try and, and, and pin these people down. Chair, yeah, sorry, maybe clarity on that point. Mm. Uh, you told us that they found there was nothing wrong was going on, but when we look at the Auditor General report, there was some loss registered at the company, at the airline. Now, can you convince the committee, how can you convince the committee that really there was nothing going wrong yet? There was some losses registered. Are you telling us that these losses are not there? What is it? Okay. E effectively, e losses are put on leave of absence. He never received money. And that money is totaling to around 189 million uh, shillings. Then also the untaken leave, the payment in lieu of the notice, uh, his repatriation allowance, he has already informed the panel, the committee that is, is Zambian, but despite being gotten from wherever he was, he has never been repatriated, and that's why he's still here in Uganda. So those are some of the claims that we we are seeking for in the industrial court. When he was put on uh, suspension, and one of the prayers that he made in the industrial court were uh, submitted by Mr. Mleya. The manner in which he was put out of the company was quite, um, for lack of a, bat, a better word, quite illegal. So uh, in labor, in labor cases, we always start with the commissioner labor, and as he already informed uh, the committee, that we filed a case before the labor commissioner, and on account of the non-appearance and uh, participation of Uganda Airlines, they made no show, not once, not twice, but three times, the matter was referred to the industrial court. As we speak now, the matter is uh, going to be cause listed for a precession. Uh, good enough, we thank the government that... Uh, there is now a new judge who is going to hear the matter, and uh, by September, the first week, we shall be uh, uh, handling the matter. We shall be starting the matter. However, we need to also point out that, despite being served with the copy of uh, the complaint made in the industrial court, which was duly received on the 31st day of May 2022, Uganda Airlines has made no attempt to even respond to this. Uh, I don't know whether it is just the manner or the culture at Uganda Airlines because all the correspondences that we've been filing or serving them have all gone unanswered and we're well aware that they have a legal counsel, in-house counsel, a, quite a uh, senior counsel, Mr. Viseriko, but we have not received any response from them. So we, inf we intend actually to, inf to persuade court to hear our matter ex parte because the timelines given by the industrial court, which were incidentally 10 days, it is now almost coming to four months without no response from Uganda Airlines. Honorable Chair, just a rejoiner. I want to know whether you still... It and got here. Next time we plan better. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Maybe we've... Uh, so did, do you plan that it's a timeless day and already made in our vocabulary in Uganda that in the first five years of an airline is in France, so you don't take, we expect lots, losses? Or did you look at it in a way that scientific and said, now, we're going to have this starting, we'll have the systems running, getting rules and doing this, and maybe something happen. We need to have, these are risks. And we may get 
passengers, we're going to get partners, we're not get the roads. So in your lineup of work, do you think about having a risk manager so that would at least not have to look at if as a norm in Uganda or in, in, in our business as, as, as a government, so that we, we would just go straight go and get our money going straight? Do you advise, do you think about it, or do you, do you think it's necessary to have a risk manager so the management style in your um, uh, planning the business you're going to set up for you guys a challenge it's a big challenge uh, and you pass um, guests uh, witnesses and the ones of today are saying we shouldn't talk about it because it's an infancy but uh, whatever it is it's a term generally so we're saying the Uganda Airlines in this infancy in the past three or four the Uganda Airlines UA, UNACL is it? Uh, I'd like to bring uh, my observation how she was recruited and can he also tell us did she submit her documents, academic documents because when we were also asking the other one who were doubting the documents whatever can he tell us because by that time he was the CEO, so director. Then another question is, he said that there were several people who were convinced that perturbing me to say that the person who was doing that again was appointed to be the CEO. Right to the appointing authority on what was going to take place like this over you know he saved the taxpayers money he said that uh, one of them overstate, overstated the uh, 400 and f see this this bug end that you are talking about is it the current ceo of uh, caa we needed also to know that i wanted to know that and then chair we need to compliment him i want a little to thank him for saving this money what or totally just coming from out because um, when people are talking about financial losses and others I think the main source must have been from the auditors report so was uh, some of those allegations the process or you are being headhunted for your because it was not clear when you became CEO when you became technical advisor did you compete with other people for those positions when I became technical advisor, I, like I said, I was appointed to the task force. I was not even in this country. I received a letter from the Right Honorable Prime Minister. I don't know the process that was carried out to arrive at my appointment. I was outside this country. So that's how I came in. I came in when I came in. There was nothing like Uganda Airlines here. That's what I was explaining. There was no plan. No paper, no desk, nothing. I had to build the plan. I had to build everything, negotiate. Honorable members, this is not a small task. It is not. I was going into meetings reading a 300-page agreement on aircraft purchases. On my own, we get to the meeting, nobody has read it. Do you know how hard it is to, to do this work? Now you have the airline there. I save you out of, yes, this is why, that allowance. Because this thing, it has, somebody has to work to make it a reality. Somebody has to work to make it a reality, honorable members. I thank you for the privilege you gave me to do that. It is not every day that you get such an assignment. And that is why for me, I took it very seriously. I could not allow shenanigans within the airline that would make it fail. It saddens me, even now, for me to have to go to court against the same airline that I formed. But you have seen the background to this issue. It was not my wish. It is very, very painful. Because I did due diligence from A to Z, honorable members. And people have dug for over one and a half years. 
They accuse me in the media. They have found nothing to say that I did wrong. I didn't take anything from the people of Uganda. Okay, um, let's pick another set of questions. Uh, start at the back, Honorable Pius, then I'll move Honorable Hashim, uh, like that. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, me, I would like to, to know from the former CEO, uh, what is the current status of the case at the industrial court? That's what I want to know. Thank you. Okay, Honorable Hashim. Uh, thank you, Chair. <coughs> Chair, I have only two simple questions and uh, just one complimentary. Uh, the former C CEO, the former CEO, said that there was a lot of. Okay, the Honorable Prime Minister later said technical advisor on the implementation task force will be paid a consolidated monthly allowance of 70. 434, 70,434,000 shillings. Yeah, it is a, 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 an allowance. And I have to tell that at this time when I came in as the consultant, government had a proposal uh, from sections within, the, uh, uh, within Uganda who wanted uh, to, to have the business plan, business plan prepared for a fee of $3 million. Mr. Chairman, for the interest of time, just read for us figures up okay. the end. So 29th June 2028, consolidated allowance again, when I became a task force member to Uganda Airlines, the same money, 7434, was carried out because I was a consultant. Extension 8th May, same terms and conditions. Acting CEO, uh, 4th September, they added now, they put me on the payroll under PAYE, so they protected the 70 allowance and it became 118-381-747. Yeah. Yes. Because they added the PAYE. Yeah. Otherwise, it's ten, same tenth. You read that figure in full. Yes. For us, we are senior six levers. One, one, what? We don't understand. You yeah. For us, the figures. <laughs> 118. 381,747. Yes, The only time it changed again was on the 19th February 2020. 19th February 2020, that's when it became 126065454. Come again. 126065454 on the 19th of February 2020. Okay, that's Chair. 126 million. Chair, that money was coming from a baby. Come again? The money was coming from a baby. What will happen if it becomes an adult? Chair, clarification. Yes, Chair. clarification, Honorable Maneno. Yeah, thank you so much, Chair and the members. Can he lay the document on the table so that we also view it properly? Thank you. So the documents you've been reading, are those originals or do you have copies? These are originals. These are originals? Yeah. We would like to get copies. Okay. Yeah, we'd like to get copies. Yeah. Chair. Oh, yes, sir. Honorable Cuthbert. Chair.
I suppose you want to start with the Prime Minister's letter? Yes. And yes. then we move progressively. Yes, that's true. Okay, sure. Yes. The the Okay, so colleagues, we are meant to have uh, the shareholders tomorrow. <laughs> uh, that is uh, an aircraft. That is part of the equity they are putting in. But it was not defined in the initial share capital that was filed with the memorandum and articles of association. So you have to put it as deposit for shares. Because at an appropriate time, you have to register with URSB and expand your shareholding. Then you pay your stamp duty, and then they can be part of the equity. So that's the step that needs to be covered. Otherwise, the investment has been made. The aircraft are there, which are part of the structure of the company, registered in the name of Uganda Airlines and is property of government and the people of Uganda. Now the administrative part is to convert that equity through a registration at the URSB, payment of stamp duty, and then it becomes part of the equity. Okay, any final questions, colleagues, as we close? Okay, maybe one final question to you. Um, we want our airline to thrive. You were part of the inception uh now you are out what what do we need to do as a country to make sure this airline is efficacious that ugandans get value uh for the money they're injecting yes. now that you were part of the initial processes yes e effectively what happened first of all what happened on the 29th of april it did a lot of damage what happened on 29th the, of april yeah that is when um uh, the minister came and took out the management and all the publicity that went there. Are you saying that because you were fired? No, 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 I'm not. Mm. Because I know the image of the airline was dented. It didn't have the same profile at all. Uh, after that, so we need to clean the airline's image and make sure that it's thriving again in the marketplace. It's got the same reputation that it has at the beginning. So, uh, so I would say the things that were envisaged when the airline was planned, which is no political interference, no undercapitalization. You should have people who are committed to the interests of the airlines managing this. You should have people who are competent and properly experienced to do structures at the airline. Um, you should uh, uh, make sure that the airline is supported in terms of travel by St all stakeholders in Uganda uh, because this is their airline, it's their baby. The moment you want to travel, you have to decide, do I go Uganda Airlines, do I go another airline? It shouldn't be such a debate. When you think of flying to areas where it's flying, it should naturally be because uh, I'm spending government money, I'm doing this, it should be Uganda Airlines because when it grows, it provides employment, uh, it provides linkages in the economy, we can export our products, we can expand our route and the outreach, and the economy thrives. So these are the things that will make the airline grow. Uh, but at this stage, we, I believe that uh, you need to put a strong management team with the governance structures that are there to protect the airline. Uh, without doing that, uh, then it will forever be limping. As long as government governance is not strong and you don't have a strong team that can manage and build a strategy that takes us from where we are in infancy into a mature organization with all the linkages worldwide and with structures and systems 
that enable it to eliminate all the bad practices in the industry, and then the airline might struggle. Okay, I want to thank you, Mr. Conwell Mulea, for coming today. Um, we are still probing Uganda Airlines, and whenever we think there's questions you must respond to, we shall invite you back. Thank you for coming. We can release you now. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, members. Unakuluwa lero, tu sisi inkanye, omukulu Conwell Mulea, ya li CEO wa Uganda Airlines. Uh, Tupade tuina okubeda ni management ya Uganda Airlines, nge kule embedua, umuchala Jennifer Bamuturaki. Um, Tuatumie polisi, unakuluwe gulo, kumuleta. Uh, talabise, tanalabika. Tutugeza kote gira, kubanga, Jennifer Bamuturaki, ainzo kubanga, si ye ye nga ye wanizo kubanga wali yu haba nene imabega we haba mkoze saa katito genda yu mkachika ako wako la voti na chibwe bicho binji uh, bitugeza ako kutegela ilanga nine subi ni tujia kubita gela kubanga ebize bibela o kutisa tisa na chii no ulida bali ingi wano minisa na gama nti alo wachi mkiza ako ukuchankana nyo mtu sechino mu buwe bicho buwe bicho kwe gamba haba ntu haba mluwa na ko ye nga ye banji Atenga banini. So, onakuluwe ncha tugeenda kubeda wano ni Minister wa Finance, ni Minister wa Works and Transport. Tuwa galaba tunyonyuli. Kubanga beba funanyizi wa kujeni fono. Ita beba muumulimu. Beba mugamba, aleme kuja wano kukola accountability ili kubanga. Kubanga zino sente, siza mtu sechi nomu. Sente za banda Uganda. Banda Uganda baba ino kutegira. Sente za abu. Ziko zese wazitia. So, tugeza kutegira. Ira, katisubire nti ni parliament, echa kuingida munso ongeno, kubanga, jine mimi tujukula kuruwa fe, tujukula kuruwa parliament. So kati, omutu omu wa sala onti, aa, nzika kati, sija kudayeyo, obachi, tuwa gala tutegele, kubanga vingi nebe tulaba maulile, ngaba nene babi etabamu. So, tuwa gala ba minister, nchaba tuvulile, bani, abe etabi munso ongeno, bani haba china mu interest. Kubango, inzo kubango ulia, unga jenifa ba mtura kitali yeka ye, nga ye. Nga wetu wazu uleda pineti, pineti yaani, pineti nga tunonya pineti, venture le guanga ni tegera, pineti yaani. So kati, e, guanga kansovide, tuja kumala tutegere, baani habali ye, mabiga wa Jennifer ba mturaki. So ba minister, ba mfuna anjizi wako, bagi enda kujia wano, batu vulidi, obabe bachikula, bonga, bonga ba minister, oba, waba wali wo, ababa singa ko, habali mchi indu chino, batu vulidi, tuchitegere. Yes, kono mulea ya li CEO wa Uganda Airlines, uh, chipade chukulo kubeda na yele ilo, atunyo nyule, kumanga ya li in charge, ila ya li kuwabo abata andika Uganda Airlines. So, binji vya atunyo nyude, ila nga gamba anti eventually, abamu goba mu Uganda Airlines, beya li alemesa okuba sente, atuhuli de, ya li alemesa abantu abamu, okue milimu abenganda za we, nga wale misanga CEO, then wali wabalala, awali wagalo kuwe milimu kampuni za awe, nga procurement regulations, tibazi gobele de. So mkule misa abantu bano, ya gamanti, abantu awe ya liyale misa, atipi vamu sindikiriza, ni vamu gubamu Uganda Airlines. Uh, Nira atuhuli deko, nebi muku biyali umu chisela chayali CEO. Wali umu kuru umu, tea gobele la procurement regulations, ya li procurement manager. Ida, echitongo li nichifiru wa sente. Ida yenga agamba ya liyagalo umu ya gobebwe. Ni hati bakama ababa msinga kuni bagama nchia hati tumugoba Tumuo mulimu mulala ila mchitongo lechechimu Kati yao wali wafuluga hata tegelikika uh, Echila chatu huli deko Nti walo kampuni eiti wa abavata Ila anga kampuni eno mchala Jennifer Bunturaki Ajina mwa mkono Ila ya webu wa mulimu Mchiseda Jennifer Bunturaki Boyali commercial director Ida chof dola babantu banu kampu nye note ya ita mitendeja procurement. Baju no kula yo yonga yo. Tiwali wo competition inti kati ona. Tatemu bidi noli noli noli. 
Lentu labe ania singa Baju wa mulimu yonga yo Ni ate Ebizibwe mune vijia Over invoicing Mkunyo nyola kwe Kampu nieno uh, Ilanga Jennifer Bamutulaki Achilimu nga wachinyo nyode Jennifer yali ayagala Kuba saint Iza Uganda Airlines Which to which kubanga Kampu ni wevange ina kusasulibwa Dola Emitualo anamu enkumi nya Na ya ate Actually ya kampu ni yalie ino kusasulibwa Dola Emitualo kumi na msambu mwe enkumi biti Na ya ate Mbu Jennifer na ate kayo invoice Ya emitualo anamu enkumi nya Aga dola Chiba chitegeza Bali bagala kula uonja ulo Bozite kamuza Uganda Milioni lunana Mu milioni nsambu Milioni lunana mu nsambu munya Yenja ulo Jivali bagalo kula Kumuli mbo wango kukoze Takwa sente zino Atino yungede muko Mkusaba sente no gama Chia ze yungede mubo eziti Ze muino tuwa So atugami ndiecho Ya chizula Ida niba chitemesa Ida na gama Ticho vdola ba Mchalo ono ya soko Gubibu wa lulibu ya liyali Commercial director So Ye kono mulea gamba banja abaze ba mulwanyisa ngaba ina ebagala okwefunira mu Uganda Airlines so binji na ine nesubi nti tujja kutuka ku ntobo ye nsonga zino zonna zonna no speak actually kumutegeza ako uh, biche bigenda maso kubanga babera batu uh, yatuwa ya deadline Daga ntikati, jaga la malize speed na chiku vanga entities nyingi nyo Ida mwamuli ya kuflow, na malo kuteka yo report ya Uganda Land Commission uh, Naga ntikakati, mwine banga tono, mkule speed speed So, uh, tukeza hao kula speed speed na ye, uh, wali wabakeza hao kulemisa So, uh, ni hitu wagala, yenjiki msonge enu, ategele, chichi echitu saze speed Kupaka kati zinu na kuzili bili, abantu manu tipajia um, Aino tegira luwachi Tulude woko uh, Kwa saganya Enso nga zino Na ye Baba na Uganda Babelewa kakamu Eventually badja kutegira Ani alie imabiga Uwajeni faba mturaki Neba ne Neba ne Kumanga Boba to ina enso nga yu Na luwacho obote ya Uko accountability Neba na Uganda Luwacho obato ya gala Kwenye nyolako Boba to walibu zibu Walo mchala kutuwa yetu nonya msonga za Uganda Land Commission, Barbara Imario, uye ya buli ya dala ya duka ni mwonsi na agenda, titumanyi wajali. Kumanga, wali wu, imivuyo minji jieta ba mu, ilaka tusubile interpol eventually jamu kwa ata. So kati boba, tuli muirufu, tuli mulambu lukufu, atenga, do wali okula na bo, batu buli dati, ah, mtu oyu, ya lia wakamba niye, emilimu, atenga wibongela muenja ulo, na chii, kwe gamba, vivuzo vinji, na ansa antono, na ini nesubi. Tuja kutuka ku Tobo ye nsonga zino zona Ok, ok mm. Mm. Well, what, what I picked um, Of course he has shared what he was able to share um, Looks like there are um, Certain other names that have not come through, you know. Uh, he says, "Look, I'm out of the picture now, uh, so the people in charge now have more information." But he he said generally there were several forces. There was political interference. He's talked about the minister coming, flying with the paper, saying, "Now this one is booted out." Uh, he did recommend the firing of somebody who did not follow procurement guidelines and cost money to the entity. But as you heard him say, he said, higher powers said, no, let's not fire the person. Let's just reassign him another responsibility. So from what I hear him say, it looks like he was frustrated in doing the work that he wanted to do. Hmm. You see, the Auditor General paints a picture for you and then you've got to dig deep. So when there are losses, losses occur not just to airlines, but any business can incur losses. But then you need to try and understand why are losses being cut, being incurred, you know. And so now, if you realize that some of the losses are because procurement guidelines were not followed, 
some of the losses are because of over invoicing some of the losses are because they avoid tickets you know there's fraud so all these become concerning it's not just a loss of something hazardous happened or you know um, an act of god or whatever the case might be so then we get to follow and have a good understanding you realize that people who are in charge many of them are not competent they don't have the requisite qualifications you have a commercial director whose highest qualification is senior six according to the records which is submitted to us you know you have an hr manual which is stipulating what the qualifications are supposed to be from ceo and all these other positions but the holders of these positions do not meet the standards set by their own hr manual how do you expect losses not to incur so losses have got to be explained okay um, so the the, the summons that we issued through police are still in place uh, I don't know if he's hiding currently or whatever the case might be, but uh, we handed it over to police to make sure she does come here. Uh, but as we wait for that to happen, because it looks like it might even be higher than police, sometimes I sympathize with the police officers that we send to do this work. You know, maybe they meet a lot more stiffer resistance. Uh, but that's something we are seeking, we're hoping to understand when these ministers come here tomorrow. We want them to help us understand. Uh, how they are operating, who is giving instructions to who, because this management is accountable to us as a committee of parliament and for that matter to Ugandans. So as these two shareholders, we want, because they are not there on their own right, because it is not the Minister of Works and Minister of Finance that have injected their personal money. It is taxpayers' money. So the, the taxpayer is interested in knowing, and we are hoping these ministers will clarify to us, are they the ones who are telling Jennifer do not come to the committee anymore maybe the exposure is revealing a lot more that might end up uh, leading us to many other powerful people in this country i believe we'll get to the bottom of this issue okay so um today we have interacted with uh, the C former ceo of uh, uganda airlines mr conwell Mulea. It was important that we interact with him because he was in charge at some point and so we needed to get his perspective on a couple of issues because he was the head of this institution this entity uh, at some point we expected management the current management headed by jennifer bamturaki to come here today they have not showed up they have not communicated in any way um, What's becoming clear to me is that there are so many powers that are vested in this issue. I get the feeling that Jennifer Bamturaki is perhaps not operating on her own. There are bigger powers who are telling her, no, don't go there anymore. Maybe the exposure is becoming too much. Uh, a lot is being unearthed. There are many vested interests. We invited the two shareholders tomorrow minister of finance and minister of works and transport who have been overseeing all of this uh, we want them to help us understand are they the ones who are giving instructions to jennifer bamduraki not to come uh, are there higher power who is in charge of uganda airlines who owns it anyway that's a question that we want to have a good understanding of because as far as i'm concerned uganda airlines is owned by the people of uganda they're the ones that inject money into it but looks like there are people who own Uganda Airlines and they want to drive it a certain way. So this is something, good clarity we shall want to get from these two ministers so that we know. If Uganda Airlines is owned privately by some individuals, then maybe it's not our business as parliament, you know, um, and then we leave it alone. But if Uganda Airlines is a public entity, falling under our committee it is our business and so tomorrow we are hoping we'll get very good clarity we're also going to get engaged you know um, I'm going to seek to meet the speaker because this is not about Joel Senyony um, this is a committee of parliament who are given instructions to do this work we want to see if there can be support we can get from the office of the speaker to be able to do this work um, so all this is clarity that we want to have a good understanding of okay and uh, 
we, we have been seeing a lot in the newspapers. So if there's somebody above Jennifer Bamdraki who doesn't want Kosase to inquire into the operations of Uganda Airlines, let them let us know. And then we shall pick it up from there. Away from that, we have met uh, Conwell Mulea, former CEO of Uganda Airlines. And uh, as you could see, there's lots of issues. We, we have picked up, he was part of the team that uh, got this rolling. Uh, he has raised several concerns, which according to him, are what eventually led to him being pushed out. He says he was frustrating people who were trying to flout procurement regulations, uh, people who were trying to hire their relatives and so on, recruitment. Um, and he says those are the ones that eventually pushed him out. He has also um, raised an issue which he nipped in the bud, um, an over-invoicing of a company called Abavata, which, as documents that we have gathered, has a connection to Jennifer Bamdraki, the current CEO. Uh, this is a company that was hired without following procurement guidelines, you know, but at the time she was commercial director. Little wonder they were directly picked. But aside from procurement regulations not being followed, then there are issues of over-invoicing. Uh, because if they are meant to be paid 117,000 US dollars, they end up being paid 400. Uh, an invoice is put in for 404,000 US dollars. That's excess of about you know, 870 million Uganda shillings. Uh, luckily, the taxpayer didn't lose that money because, as he says, he was able to nip that in the bud. And uh, those are some of the things, according to him, that led to his pushing out. So maybe that's why... There are, there are so many powers that are vested in this particular issue. We are hoping we'll get to the bottom of this. Um, at the end of the day, Ugandans out there want to know, because it's their money. It is taxpayers' money. If it was an individual who had invested in Uganda Airlines, it would not be our business. But this is taxpayers' money, and that's why we want to know. And so if there are some powerful people who are saying, it's none of your business, you Ugandans, let them speak out. And then we shall know. We want to eventually know who is behind Jennifer Bamuturaki. Hopefully we shall get to have that question answered.